All right, let's go ahead and dive into the 14.8 patch notes rundown with Mort Dog. Hello, guys. Right, Mort here. Hey, everybody. Riot Mort here, and it is time for another patch rundown. Right. Another two weeks have passed, and we are on to the second patch. And here we go. Here we uh, go. Last patch, not one of the best patches out there. It was no, okay. It was pretty uh, but bad. Clearly, sort of dominated by some reroll comps mm -hmm. and a certain augment that probably should have Man, gone. Man, I'm getting Mort Dog um, again. So some changes to fix here. Uh, and we are taking some big strides at kind of changing the meta a bit. So if you're one of those players that likes the meta changing, this is going to be the patch for you. Uh, oh, balance thrashing. So let's dive right in. You know, a lot of people have said that they don't want balance to change too much because there's too much swinging. They call it balance thrashing. But uh, people have been asking for more changes lately because they want the meta to drastically shift. So let's see what he's got in store. Uh, first off, player damage. Uh, this is a system that's been pretty archaic. Uh, pretty confusing for a lot of our players. Yeah. Uh, it's really weird how the units left alive were doing two damage until the third one, then it's one damage. It's one damage. So yep. we're finally simplifying player damage. Thank God. Player damage is now going to be plus one for every surviving unit. That's it. Simple. Plus one for every surviving unit. So if you know the base, if the base is two, you can go two, three, four, five. Easy. Okay, so it's a nerf to damage. It'll be a very simple system. Uh, now to compensate, the base damage went up by two at every stage. So base at stage two went from zero to two. You can add two. I don't need to math this all out for you. Uh, what this generally means for the game, though, is that if you were losing by one, you're going to take some more player damage. If you're losing by two, it'll be the same. And if you're losing by three or more, you're actually taking less damage. So there yes. will be less player damage going around for really bad losses. Uh, so if you're getting your butt kicked, it won't hurt quite as bad. Um, we'll see how that goes. It might be a little less player damage. We'll see. But yeah, Fortune, definitely one of the benefactors of this. We'll see how it goes. But we do need to do this in the long run just to simplify the system. This has been a long time coming. And so if we have to add more base damage to stage four and five mm. later, we will. But for now, simple systems are good. Okay, so right away, you guys know exactly what people are going to predict. Fortune already is running pretty rampant. And right now in the current metagame, a lot of people think that Fortune is too warping at higher levels. At lower levels, not really entirely sure. But at least at higher level, we're talking about like GM to Challenger right now. Uh, Fortune is very, very prevalent in many games. And now that they're nerfing effective damage for bad losses, that makes Fortune even stronger and it's going to make other things like Tiny Titans, Metabolic Boost, even Five Fortune, because you heal, as well as the encounters that heal feel way swingier, more impactful. And you might be thinking, okay, it's like one HP, but it's not just one HP uh, isolated. It's the fact that that's cumulative across every round, and that adds up over the course of the game. And how many times have you felt like you just need one extra life or just a little bit few hit points? And that would have made all the difference between stabilizing instead of going eighth or seventh, you win out and you go top two. So a lot of people probably are going to be like, dude, this is a fortune patch. We, I haven't looked at the rest of the patch, so I don't even know if fortune's getting nerfed. I'm assuming they're going to nerf fortune to compensate for it. But this is a big deal. This is a big deal. One thing I do like is that they're normalizing the damage, though. It is very confusing. A lot of times when you're like, when I'm, when I'm casting, I'm coaching. I'm like, is this enough damage? I don't know. Because it's like hard to count so many units. Because sometimes it's like you're counting the target dummy. You're counting the, the kale. You're counting the ZZ rot, and just sometimes you just get it wrong. Uh, this should theoretically help it, but uh, you know, so it, I, I do think that they were right that the system is archaic. I wish it was more transparent. Like maybe there's a way for them to show you how much damage you will be taking. Uh, it, for example, as people know, I did something recently with Hearthstone Battlegrounds. They show you how much damage as it's happening, so it kind of feels more visual. But uh, whatever, it's fine. Either way, this is going to make uh, loose streaking like way stronger with Fortune. So uh, I'm assuming they're going to nerf that. If they don't, I'm going to write. Uh, the other thing here, streaks. We've heard your feedback, and we agree. The loss <gasps> of two streaks, bad. So now if you two streak, you get a gold. Great. Uh, it doesn't oh, matter if you win or lost streak. Oh, God. You get a gold. Thank you God. You know, it's, it's, you might think I'm overreacting to this, but the two streak is such a big deal because the early two streak is such a big deal whether or not you make your first interest threshold point, which impacts the rest of the game. Not only that, it's just boring to not play for anything when you feel like, okay, well, the streak doesn't really matter, win or lose, so whatever. Now it feels like anytime you can turn the tides and lean into the momentum of what ends up happening, just it's just more engaging. You know, stage two, 
felt like way less interesting. I know this, if you, if you don't care, if, you, if you're like a casual TFT player, this doesn't really make that big of a difference to you. But as you start to get higher and higher in ranks, the amount of granularity of playing for a two streak has such a big profound difference of how you play the following rounds. This is a really big deal. This is a really big deal. Uh, the other thing is we haven't really been happy with how easy it is to three star three costs and we don't want to have to nerf them all into oblivion. So we are making them a little harder to hit at 36. level seven. Level seven, the odds are going down from 40% to 36% uh, compensated in the one and two cost space. So Weird. level seven should be a little harder. Again, our choice is make it harder to hit or nerf them all. And we went with harder to hit here. So level seven gets a bit huh. of a nerf. I'm interested. What do you guys think about this? My first instinct is that this will just make it more frustrating uh, because it feels like it feels like 36 should still feel like good enough to hit. But it just feels like now you're really not going to hit sometimes like you, you, you roll with seven, like seven of the copies and you have like 60 gold and you're like, huh, I should hit. And now you're like, well, I guess I missed. I just, I lose the game. I mean, it does, it does feel bad to miss, but at the same time, I understand what more saying, like there's a trade-off. Do you, would you rather hit less often or make them weaker? I think I would rather make them a little weaker personally, but uh, this does make three cost rerolls significantly, significantly weaker. 10% less often is a really big deal. And it's not even just uh, like 10% less often. It's also the way it cascades onto other three costs, right? Because because one other three cost reroller is less likely to hit. That means you as a three cost reroller are also like less likely to hit because they're pulling fewer of those three costs out of the pool. So if you're rerolling Aphelios and someone else is rerolling Yone, it just makes it l less likely that both of you hit. It, there's less of a domino effect, which is a good thing for the rest of the lobby that isn't trying to do that strategy. But uh, on the encounter side, huge list of changes here. No, just kidding. Uh, there was the Morgana one where it was you could either upgrade the next two cost you buy or get gold. The answer was 100% of the time, 10 gold. We'd rather, it, you know, 10 gold was so ridiculous. So that goes down to seven gold. It's still probably seven gold most of the time. But if you want a two cost, you could go here. Cool. This encounter should be a little less obvious. So. I mean, it's 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 only I mean, it's only uh, seven gold every time if you know, don't have a reason for it. But if you're playing like Ethereal Blades or like Midnight Siphon, some of these like two cost reroll hero augments i mean you pretty much take the two cost upgrade it's, it's very worth all right on the trade side uh dragon lord dragon lord four and five looking pretty strong honestly got out pretty lightly with the nerfs here but four does two percent less true damage five does three percent less true damage here four and five dragon lord are still great the stun's the value anyway the stun is the value so, that is but true. this should lower the peak of something like the five dragon lord Zaya. Uh, Exalted. We love Exalted. It's a really fun trait. It's hey. one of the cool things of this set. Uh, hasn't really played out as like a super strong trait. For now, the base damage is going up 1%. And then the 5 Exalted is getting buffed from 2.5 per level to 3 per level. Hopefully makes this a little more playable. Uh, if it doesn't, we'll add even more from there. I don't know. I think 5 will need a little more. We'll see. But there you go. This is really good. I think Exalted is one of the best things about the sets from uh, people who... From a perspective of people who like to play a lot of TFT, because it's such an interesting puzzle of how you can fit Exalted into your game uh, without compromising too much. Because even if you think like, okay, well, Exalted, there's probably like a way you can build around it every single game. You don't you don't build it the same way every single time because it depends on your items and your augments and who you can actually carry. So I think Exalted is a really good change. Uh, five Exalted being buffed. Um, I'm not sure if this is enough, but. Uh, that's a pretty significant buff. Right now, you basically never play five Exalted unless you have an enormous amount of extra Tactician's Crowns or uh, you're playing like the 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 all two cost Exalted, which maybe the, maybe the all two cost Exalted ends up becoming busted where you just play all the Exalted that are two cost and you play too healthy, but uh, we'll see. Uh, faded, 45% Omnivamp is a lot of Omnivamp. Uh, a little too much Omnivamp, in fact. Okay. And so True. watching Aphelios 3 heal to full was a lot so we're gonna lower that down to 36 percent 12 percent base for the set omnivamp so there you go okay. uh and then syndra was kind of one that you never really picked so we're buffing her a little bit she gets one percent more base so if you want to make uh syndra your faded should be more of an option now yeah that makes sense i don't i can't even think of one scenario where this this entire set so far where I've preferred to link Syndra over the either the raw offensive stat or set and thresh. I've always done Yasuo Thresh. I've done like Ari, like for AP. I've done uh, uh, set and thresh. I don't think I've done Syndra once. 
So this makes sense. I, I just feel like it feels like Syndra was not as useful as the raw stat. Like even if you're playing like Kindred or something like that, I feel like you'd rather just link Ari and and set or something like that instead to get the AP bonus. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Fortune. Fortune is getting a small nerf here. The player damage changes. We yeah, knew Fortune kindred. would be really, really good. So okay, at the very least, Fortune 5 is going to be less healing. Fortune 5s won't be quite as much of an instant win with three player health per turn. It'll go down to two. Yes, three fortune will still be just as good though, so not going to change much here. Uh, Heavenly, Heavenly gets a small nerf at seven. Uh, Heavenly, is something we kind of have our eye on for future updates. Wait, what? Uh, but for now, only nerf to seven, seven a teeny tiny bit. Wait a second, isn't Heavenly the entire reason why half these comps are so good? Like the reason why Heavenly, Heavenly Vi Fine Vintage, Heavenly Yone. There's just Heavenly Darius reroll that came out this patch. There's uh, you can still just play Heavenly like Kane. I guess they're all just the same thing. They're just playing around Heavenly Reapers, but uh, I'm pretty sure Heavenly itself is, is really good even outside of just the seven piece. I'm surprised. I, I think six could probably come down a little bit. Uh, Story Weaver. Three Story Weaver uh, is just a little too good in the early game. Three Story Weaver is probably the strongest opener you can get, uh, lowering the power of that a bit. Hopefully next patch we get some power back Still? in five Isn't it seven. Darius too? Um, but for now, three Story Weaver is kind of just a free stage two, so lowering the power of that KL a little. To be honest, it's still a, a powerful thing, but not a big deal. Okay, let's go ahead and fact check this real quick. I'm going to pull up Meta TFT's early comp stage power. And according to Meta TFT, oh, more dogs right. Like all variations that are winning early game right now are Story Weaver variants. I kind of thought the Darius 2 would be the highest win rates or like one of them, but maybe he's going to nerf him later on. But it does look like it is a, a, a cut, a couple cut above everything else for the most part like some some of the really dominant openers like faded darius 2 are like five seven percent win rate less than some story weaver but that's assuming you get like really insane stars like timo timo story weaver is just ridiculous all right i can buy it i can buy it uh ink shadow ink shadow is finally in a good spot here just a couple of the items are a little off now we're glad that seven ink shadow is a playable trait uh tattoo of bombardment coming <laughs> you buffed down a everything little bit. tattoo of protection still the best one after all the buffs uh, they, they, they buffed everything tattoo of toxin yeah. ended up being an over buff here so this is going back down to the 33 percent it was and then tattoo of vitality was still actually bad so that one gets buffed yeah again trying to get these tattoos all really really closely balanced with each other um so that should help ink shadow okay cool. i mean they buffed all the ink shadow stuff but uh one thing to note is that there is some tech with tattoo of vitality Apparently, if you put it by Tattoo of Vitality on a unit like Irelia, and then you give Irelia a bunch of HP, it uh, ends up being ridiculously strong. So this might th be one of the things where if you ever get Tattoo of Vitality, if you can get into a spot to play around Irelia, you might just win the game. Porcelain. Six Porcelain. You need two emblems and a five cost. It's supposed to be powerful. It's a little too powerful. It's yeah. a little like comparable to Nine Umbral Powerful. That's a little much. Nine Umbral so Powerful. So this is getting nerfed and both Brand new attack sentence. speed and damage reduction. Small thing. Should Nine still be very good. Powerful. And then Umbral, <laughs> speaking of which, six Umbral gets the execute raised up 2%. Should be a little better. And then nine Umbral, another 5%. So hopefully that helps six and nine Umbral a little bit. So there you go. Good buff. All right, champions. Uh, <gasps> Garen, probably the weakest one cost being propped up by Story Weaver. Wait and a you're second. You're going to see this a lot. Pretty much all the Story Weaver champs are very weak. Uh, they're going to get some buff. So this should also help the Garen hero augment. Yeah. So Garen's shield now gets bigger. Three star, even bigger, cool. I play a lot of story champion. I don't. I think you guys have seen me play it like three times in the past week, and I think my lowest placement with it was third. So uh, this Garen is better. I think they, they. I heard that they were nerfing Titans, so maybe that compensates for it. But if you haven't tried Garen reroll, it's actually quite solid right now. It's not. It's not going to win any lobbies. But if you have a spot for it, it's actually quite good. Uh, Nar, this is an interesting uh, buff. This is a buff. Yeah. Basically, to get to max stacks, instead of 50, it's, it's only going to take 25. And the base is the same. Now, he is getting nerfed from the Titans nerf we'll talk about later. But Nar should be able to cap out better. If you're looking for a reroll comp to play next patch, Nar should still be pretty solid here. Especially if you get mulched early. I imagine he'll be pretty solid still. Uh, There's, by the way, uh, one thing that I've been told is that Nar is being played a lot in other regions. Right now, right this very moment. Over the weekend, uh, there's a Japanese tournament that we haven't watched on stream, but uh, I, I was told that the ja in the Japanese tournament, NAR was dominating. In EU, there's a lot of NAR as well. Uh, there was a little bit of NAR in China yesterday. Maybe when we watch the finals uh, coming up after this, then uh, NAR, we might see more NAR. 
But if you look at TFT Academy, because people always ask where some of the changes are TFT Academy, because we don't have a change log. Uh, one thing, for example, is that we, we've moved up the NAR reroll variants, including Kindred and Senna, uh, higher up because they've just been gaining more and more popularity. Riven, another example of a story we were ch champion that's uh, struggling. <gasps> so Riven gets five base AD and a little bit more heal. Do I think this is going to make Riven carry meta? No. <laughs> but maybe player as an early game item holder or something. Uh, but there should be some more options here and helps the story weavers a bit. Now you might be going, but more, you just said story weaver openers are really good. Yep, this is part of the balance problem of story weaver, right? It's like we want Riven Carry to be a thing, but story weaver openers are strong. This is going to be a, a tough thing for us to, to balance here, but summon traits are summon traits, you know? Wait a second. So we nerfed Kale, but we buffed all the three story weavers itself. Is that uh, is that kind of power neutral then? Or because they triple buffed Garen, Riven, and Zyra, doesn't that make the story weaver opener still kind of good? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe finally all those fake Riven builds on Twitter. People were, were posting fake tech to try and encourage people to reroll Riven on Twitter. Don't get baited by it. But maybe now, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's a build of it. I don't know. Uh, all right, Senna. Senna gets a n buff and a nerf here. Uh, if you've ever watched me stream, you know that when I play Senna, she uh, she misses a lot. It drives me nuts, and I slam my headset. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we fix that. The <laughs> ability will now more reliably hit targets if her current target dies during the cast windup. Oh? So that's great. Oh, my God. Uh, but to compensate, Senna's also very strong. She's doing well in Ghostly. She's one of the best reroll comps in yeah. New Shadow. Uh, so her spell will hit a little less hard and scale off AP a little less. So honestly, I think she'll be about the same, maybe even a little buffed, we'll see, but uh, that reliability will help quite a bit. Anytime they've done this, you guys have heard me say it a few times right now, it's not just green numbers, it's green sentence, but it's not just any green sentence, it is reliably hitting your ability. That has straight up like shot champions from like C to D tier to S tier. Uh, one example would be set nine when Cassiopeia and Samira, the one cost reroll, used to reroll Noxus and Shibirima. They started landing their abilities more often. It took them from an, a C tier unit to like an S tier, S plus tier. It was ridiculous. It depends on what the, these two words, more or three words, more reliably hits is the key part of this sentence it depends on how much more reliably it is if it, if it if it is basically always hits this senna just basically got twice as good it doesn't matter if you compensate for her by nerfing she would be way more effective because so many fights get determined by her just missing uh zyra very small buff for zyra again another story weaver champion struggling you don't see a lot of zyra carries zyra gets a very small spell damage buff and the plant uh missile speed has been sped up so Wait, that's a bit. That's a bit. Wait, wait, whoa! You can't just drop a white sentence. That's a green sentence. What is this? That's a big. That, that's a. That's a buff. You, this guy just tried to sneak one past us. This guy tries to. Ha <laughs> ha. You know, maybe for the colorblind. Not for the colorblind. This guy tries to sneak one past us. Plant attack missile speed increased. How many times? Okay, this hasn't probably happened that many times. But if you play a lot of Zyra rerolls, sometimes you know that the the missile is mid transit, but then Zyra dies or the round's over. That might make the diff. That might make the diff. Uh, Alune. Alune is another champion that hasn't really been meta much at all. Uh, we haven't seen a ton of Invoker out there. If you can three-star her, she's okay. Uh, but so it gets oh, a pretty sizable buff here, going from 360 to 380 base. Cool. Uh, to no surprise, Yone is a very strong champion and is getting nerfed. Uh, Yone's attack speed going from 0 0.9 to 0 0.85. This is also in addition to the Titan's nerf, so... Hopefully this puts Yone in a better spot. Okay, uh, I mean, Oliver, these are all necessary. Very light nerf. Again, he's going to get hit by the Titan's nerf as well, but just going to be casting a little less often here. Uh, he's right now kind of the, the backbone of Ink Shadow and Duelist, so this gets a small nerf. Is Volibear the backbone of Ink Shadow? I feel like Ink Shadow is a lot more determined on whether or not you hit like Aatrox and Senna 2 um, and Shen 2 more than... Vola bear, but maybe maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe that's why my stats on are all over the place. Okay, now we move into four cost space, and you're gonna see a lot of changes here. And I talked about this on my Twitter, but basically what we didn't like is the relationship between three star three costs and two star four costs. The gap between them was too wide, especially on the defensive side. Mm. So what we've chosen to do is go through all the four costs and give them all a durability buff. 
So all the four costs are getting quite a bit more durable. Wow. Uh, they still are not going to be quite as high of a cap as like a three star three cost. But especially if you see an early, uh, you know, four, uh, one star four cost, you should be more excited because that base health will help <sighs> them out quite a bit. More excited. So let's go Very over Very exciting. Annie. 200 more base health. And remember, this is 200 base at two star. That's going to be 1.8 times 200. So 360 health. Cool. Wow. Uh, Ash. Wow. That's a really big buff to Annie. And Annie is one of those units where like, if you don't, she, she when her, when she casts again, she becomes harder to deal with because she's healing off of the, the burn effect of her, uh, of her ability. So uh, it, it's, it's, oh man. Buffing these HPs is a really, oh, it was Ash. It was Ash. They're like saying Ash is so trash. And if you buff Ash 10x the amount of HP, it wouldn't matter, which was just which was just asinine to me. Gets 200 health. Also, Ash is getting a damage buff, that mana going from 25 out of 100 to 30 out of 90. So she should be able to cast more. Hopefully this puts her on the same page as someone like Kaisa. You can play Ash Sniper. Um, wow, she might need a little more uh, after this. Pretty sizable. We'll see, but hopefully that helps. <clears throat> this is sizable because uh, yeah. uh, Ash is an attack speed champion as well. So if you give her attack speed, she's just more likely to cast, which just it just starts to snowball into itself. So yeah, it, it, it matters. Galio. Galio is one that didn't need quite as much as everybody else. Only gets 100 base HP. Okay. Galio was already pretty strong. That sounds reasonable. You need to overbuff that. Ish. Um, but there you go. But, okay, Kaisa, but yeah. yes, we know Kaisa is strong. <laughs> okay. Kaisa is benefiting from the 200 health as well. She's still a four cost. I understand she's meta. But we also lowered her attack speed. That is the nerf she gets to put her okay. on that, the same that plane is, as that everybody is else. That is a big deal. This should be a fair nerf to Kaisa. It is. Uh, Kane, 200 health, makes him, again, a lot more durable. That is very Really good for these <gasps> melee champions. They double buff Lee Sin. Uh, Lee Sin, one of the bigger benefactors here. 250 health. That should make him quite a bit better. And five more AD. Hopefully this makes Lee Sin carry more of a possibility. Okay, I don't know if any of you have ever found an early Lee Sin and put Titans BT on him. This dude is an actual demon right now on live. If you were playing a game right now and you're on stage two and you see Lee Sin in shop, and you're like, nah, buy it, pl put a Titans BT on this guy, and he legitimately lets you like fast eight and a half. It's actually crazy. Like, Lee Sin one is so oppressive already. If you get him early and you stack him with items uh oh my god okay th okay this guy might be the true demon yeah everyone's like okay buff annie whatever but like i just want to put it out there this leasing guy is actually kind of kind of unkillable early in the game leah 200 more health great and a small spell damage buff pretty sizable one actually 20 percent to the small orbs so lilia should be much more of a threat this patch we know she hasn't really found her footing i'm sure there's a deer joke in there somewhere um, her but hoofing, her hoofing. Lilia should hopefully be a four cost carry on, that you can play. Uh, Lilia needed buff. She was pretty bad. Morgana, same thing. Morgana, 200 health. Uh, more attack speed so she can cast quicker. Um, okay. Hopefully gets those those chill platforms out there. Should be nice. Uh, Nautilus, this is another one that's making Mythic look real good. 200 health for Nautilus and 20 off his mana so he can cast oh, more Oh, the mana buffs. Nautilus should be the premier, you know, CC tank game okay he, he finally will do something this might this might actually make it uh that he's gonna cast twice if you if you stack him with something like a like a, a protector's vow he might cast twice and uh I, one of those things where like if you guys remember how impactful jarvin was from set nine for example if he cast it twice it would just be kind of oppressive uh because everyone was having jarvin cast early and he cast it again it'd be devastating if this knowledge ends up casting twice consistently that can also swing fights like crazy. Orn, 200 more health. Silas, 200 more health. Syndra, 200 more health. So you can see four costs. Wow. They got more health. Wow, 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 wow. They're durable. 20% buffs across the board. Uh, five costs. With five costs, we went a little lighter. Five costs are already pretty strong. Some of them getting a little bit of health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we did do a pass on them to make sure they were fairly compensated compared to their four costs as well. Uh, so you can see here, Azir gets 100 health. It'd be weird if Azir had less health than Lilia. That, that'd be weird. Hue gets 100 health. <laughs> same guess. thing. Uh, Aurelia already had plenty of health. Now, Aurelia does get a bit of a nerf here. This is a pretty big nerf. I've talked about it on stream where she was bugged. What she would do is she would auto attack the four closest enemies. And then wherever her blades were, she would auto attack the four closest enemies from that location. So that's oh. how like the blades would end up on the back line. Now she will actually auto cast the four closest enemies. That's it. Oh, and then they're dead. wait, I didn't even know this. Oh, what the heck? 
Okay, how many of you actually knew? That, that's, that's actually a really... Isn't that a big nerf? What the heck? Before, no wonder she would just automatically just like delete back. Oh, that's that's a huge nerf. Sometimes you wouldn't do anything to my enemies back. Now it makes sense. Wow. And then she'll go to the next enemy. So she won't be able to skip the backline quite as much. Uh, but her spell can still hit backline. Her spell targeting has not changed. But this is less, you know free red buff onto the entire back line than before yeah yeah so that she is nerfed here this is a nerf uh lissandra 200 health rakan 100 health zaya 50 health uh, again these champions are strong to be honest five costs might still be a little strong this is a we'll pretty see. big buff to lissandra but we can't she have five costs with off. less health than four costs that's weird and it's mostly durability here so it should help with fight pacing uh set 100 health and udir 100 health so there you go. Okay. I mean, those all, right. all make sense, I guess. On the item side, uh, because of this health change, we did want to change Giant Slayer to not just be free proc on everybody. Yeah, So that's Giant true. Slayer and Demon Slayer get nerfed a bit. Okay. So they're not going to, you know, hit everyone necessarily, Whoa. but should be fine. That's a big nerf. Uh, that is a nerf. That is not the wrong color. It's definitely a nerf. Uh, and then Titan's Resolve. This is the big, big nerf here to Titan's Resolve. Wow. Uh, it's AP per stack is going from two to one. Uh, what this means is when it's fully capped, you were getting 50 AP before. Now you only get 25. That's a lot less, right? It's 50% so like a Titans, less. Titans, Titans, BT Yone, who had 100 AP, now has 50 AP, is losing quite a bit off his shield. Uh, Volibear, less on the heal, right? Gnar, less AD, although we compensated Gnar. But Titans, Titans, BT shouldn't be the best item all the time. There should be other things to do. I'll be honest, we kind of need to look at this item a bit more still. The relationship between it and Sterix, I'm still not particularly happy with. Uh, but for now, this is nice. And we shouldn't see, you know, 8 to 12 Titans per lobby anymore. So hopefully this helps. Okay, well, this is a huge nerf. Also, isn't it kind of hilarious that the Radiant version now gives the Standard version just to give you a sense of the, the nerf scaling? They're nerfing the Radiant version to be what it currently is on live. Uh... This, so so this is actually kind of important to understand the reason why this was so strong in the first place was because if you are a melee champion they give you additional stats and better scaling off of things like ability power to compensate for the fact that you're a melee champion but now because they gave such good ap scaling to a bunch of different champions titans end up being very broken on a bunch of different them like volibear and yone so this is a really big deal but uh, I do agree that it's not just Yone that's the problem. Like Titans is particularly really good. If you because same thing with Volibear, you, people people who don't play Titans on Volibear had no no really much the difference of like or know very well the difference of like not having Titans on it. So I, I can understand it. Uh, augments boiling point. This augment was broken, busted, busted. Uh, mana per attack giving everyone a show was a little much. Way it too goes good. Down to three. Uh, Call to Adventure, no longer offered on 3-2. No! Call to Adventure, you were not taking... No! Where's the learning to spell Call to Adventure dream? This augment on 3-2, it was a trap. This is just gone no, because no. we don't like trapping Beppo people. No, no, Beppo Carrots. Uh, everything must go. Sorry. This augment never should have shipped. We're taking it away. It's never coming yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This augment's dead. It deserves it. Uh, find Vintage. This one's tricky. I, I don't know. I think this augment could have been gold, could have been the other option, but we like having a fun silver. What? So having okay. this be a silver augment is good. Uh, Lowering it to four turns just to make you pay a little bit more. Wow. We want to keep the fun of being able to deal. choose support items and play in a cool supporty way. If you want to build, you know, three Aegises or five Zephyrs, that's kind of fun. Um, so trying to see if we can get it in the right spot. Uh, it is also no longer offered with Pandora's items. This yeah, is causing a lot work. of confusion. That's fair. For people who didn't know, Pandora's item augments, I believe, reset the timer on every fine vintage. So if you like made like a Bloodthirster, put it on the bench, and then it transformed into a Morello, then it would reset the timer. So you would never get fine vintage value like ever. So it was a straight up uh, trap. Like if you took fine vintage, then took Pandora's I items, it just would never find vintage. Uh, Raid boss, this augment was garbage on two one, absolute garbage on two one. Not offering that anymore. Yep, pretty bad. Uh, big grab bag. Have you ever taken this augment and gotten three belts? I have. It's awful. Fixing that. Can no longer give three of the same component. Thank now, you. Be thank you. I, I, I can't tell you how many times it's happened uh, where you get like three tiers, something like that. It's just, it's so sad. I will say that there are some meme builds that you probably want to be able to get that, but it's good to know that you can't anymore. Sure, you could still get belt, belt, cloak, 
but you know, at least it's a little bit better. Uh, golden remover. We added text so that it explains what it is. So if you're new to TFT <laughs> and you're like, what the hell is a golden remover? Now you know. Yeah, there it cool. is. So many people would ask what it would uh, Some small did. changes real quick. Kiana gets an attack speed buff. Will it make her a carry? I don't think so. Man, I'm getting more dogged again. And then Teemo 3. Teemo 3 two, gets to do a little bit more damage. This is a very small 5% buff to Teemo 3 only. Uh, but if you like Teemo reroll, it should be a little better. Kiana, too, Kiana actually can carry. She just falls off and needs a secondary. She kind of she kind of feels like the same as some of the other um like two ba she basically just can't primary but who can right even if you zyra carry you usually want janna even if you like play another like low cost reroll you usually want to dual carry it is the same thing you can this is actually significant enough that maybe you play kiana into lee sin or something like that and uh maybe ends up being pretty good because i think any if anybody has ever played kiana 3 and just like somehow naturaled it very early you know that she can actually put in some work she actually can give the business so i think that uh this kiana buff is is very subtly like quite good and then bugs we fix bugs because that's what we do we fix bugs yeah uh, pick of the litter can no longer yoink the unit it just gave you back to the shop cool Wait, what Fixed a number of trick shot interactions, especially. Wait, 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 wait. What is this? Pick the litter can no longer yoink the unit. It just gave you back to the shop. So, like, it would just literally, like, take the unit that you selected and then just put it into the shop? What does that even mean? Like, like you have to rebuy it or something like that? <laughs> what? That makes no sense at all. How did that even happen? It was Ricochet. Cool. Sivir's final auto during her ability now properly benefits for increased AD. Cool. Zaya's last trick shot bounce now deals damage. That's oh, a Zaya buff. That's a, that's uh, a big buff. ability no longer misses if her target dies. We talked about that. Yeah. Volibear can no longer stun CC immune targets. Sweet. Udir can no longer... Wait a second. How busted was his Volibear units? Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Someone told me that this was a visual bug and it was an actual thing. I'm pretty sure... Okay. You know what? I'm just going to stop believing what my eyes tell me. If my eyes tell me that it's being stunned, I'm just going to assume it's being stunned. Longer knock up CC immune targets. Sweet. Aurelia's I knew this carousel was true. I knew this encounter was true. visuals now work correctly. Cool. Trickster's glass on Zaya or Rakan can no longer spawn an extra clone. I, the Trickster's glass clone of Zaya or Rakan now always is in the same form uh, as the original. Even if wait, that's a cool rows. trick, though. Great. There's a cool trick where you could actually have Trickster's Glass, Zaya, and Rakan on the same board because you would just put one in the back line and one would transform, but now it's going to always stay the same. Got it. Sag. That was actually kind of a cool uh, knowledge interaction. Uh, Six and Stones is now actually disabled. Cool. Annie's model no longer persists after she dies. Storyweaver 7 Kale can no longer revive an Alawi tentacle. <laughs> so, uh, what? That would have been rough. Uh, Azir Weird. 3 can no longer leave permanent soldiers. Cool. Wait, this why one's not? big. Recombobulator no longer fails to recombobulate a champion if no champion the tier higher has enough copies left. We've seen this happen a couple times where there's two of every four costs taken out of the pool. What? Board, which means recombobulator couldn't work. We fixed that. Okay, so yeah, if there's not enough copies of the pool, then recombobulator just didn't do something. So like a lot, of, I've seen this happen on three star three costs. That's a that's a pretty significant buff to recombobulator. They just uh, they just buffed it. Uh, unified resistance VFX are now removed on combat start. Zerat portal now keeps its placement round around. Thank God. Find vintage no longer transforms temporary items. Sweet. That's good. Slammin no longer grants experience from PVE rounds. Soju, you exploiter. And the road Whoa. less traveled no longer grants XP on PVE rounds. And there you go. Okay, man. This, he just called him out, man. Soju is a bug abuser. He's a bug abuser. Why do you call out Soju? Everyone does this. I saw a bunch of people do this. Well, he calls out Soju. Uh, I didn't. Uh, th these are all. I didn't know this until like uh, a few days into the set, so or into the patch. So, but yeah, you're not supposed to pick up stuff, which is weird. It's a bugged interaction. Oh, that's the patch. Like I said, it's not a ton of stuff. It's not like our our biggest patch, but it is a lot. There's a lot of stuff going on here. It's a massive. I patch. think the four costs, especially, that's going to be very transformative to the meta. Yeah. Uh, if you're somebody who didn't like reroll. This certainly is going to change that quite a bit. Okay. Um, but there you go. And that's it for now. Um, next patch. Next patch is the big artifact patch where there will be 20 new artifacts. So uh, stay on the lookout for that. That's That'll be fun. pretty interesting as well. I don't know. I like to jokingly call it 11.25. Um, that should be pretty fun. 
And obviously, we'll keep an eye on the meta. Competitive seasons are starting to hit up as well. Yep. We're seeing like our first ladder snapshots across the regions. There it is. will be kicking in. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to do it for me. That's it for this patch. As always, we'll see you every two weeks for another patch. And there you go. Team's working hard, keeping the game fun. Things are good. All right. That's going to do it for me. Until next time, <laughs> take it easy. Thank you, Mortz. Round of applause for Mr. Mortzog. <laughs> All right, uh, summary of my thoughts on the patch. Uh, l player damage, I'm skeptical. I, I, I don't know if that's a good thing, but I'm willing to try it out. Uh, I think that it makes certain strategies much stronger, and Fortune is going to be pretty busted. Uh, maybe that's a good thing for TFT. I think, generally speaking, most people have agreed that uh, the cash-out trait will always be broken, and that might be a good thing for the player base. I don't know, though. We'll see. Uh, streaks giving gold. That's huge. I like that. Shop odds. I guess that's okay. I'm neutral on it. Um, the traits, they all make sense for the most part. I think I would like a nerf to the fortune stage three luck tables, but, uh, I think I like that they're buffing exalted. I think that's a good call out. I think heavenly could have gotten nerfed as well. Uh, umbral getting buffed is really important. I want to play more of that trait. Dude, they actually buffed so many story weaver units. They buffed Garen, Riven, Zyra, and Galio. And so they did nerf Kale, but it still might make Sway Weaver really good. Maybe that was the whole plan of it. Uh, the the four cost buff, man. This shit is crazy. It's crazy. I'm pretty sure that like people who like this cycle level, like, this might be a really good uh, patch for like the babies and the box boxes, right? Because they just level and they just hit the 2% four cost and all of a sudden they're hyper stable. We'll see. It's, it's looking kind of insane. Also, I don't know how profound these buffs are to the five cost, but the four cost is a really big deal. The five cost, it just makes like hitting some of these units maybe even stronger. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, item nerf, the tit Titans might... I don't know if it's a dead item, but if uh, if it just ends up being one of the least popular items and like a terrible percentage, like like win rates, it would not surprise me. I feel like this item in general is like really useless outside of reroll. Like, who are you putting Titans on that isn't, a, like, a three-star reroll unit right now? It doesn't feel like you actually put it... Uh, I guess maybe on, on Udyr. Maybe. But now they nerfed, like, the, the, the aspects of it that you would do that. So, I don't know. Um, I do like a lot of the changes to the augments. I mean, these are all really good changes overall. Uh, I think that, that, like, overall W changes. Um, and, of course, fixing the bugs are good. So... Overall, uh, a really much needed big change to the, the like the TFT meta because, quite frankly, I feel like not enough things changed in a in a in a, in a cool way from the first to second patch. The first patch itself was actually pretty good, pretty good in terms of the amount of meta evolution, but the second patch felt like things got stale so quickly, and then we just kind of like dealt with it for two weeks. Um, as opposed to actual, like the B patch didn't do enough. I think like they nerfed Yone, which was an important move, but it wasn't good enough, uh, to stop it from being completely overrun by Yone players and things of the sort. So.